So um, first, uh, I have to tell you that I've been shocked through all the research I've been doing. I've been learning things that I really moved me deeply. Uh, and uh, we're going to do a cr chronological presentation. First, I'll talk about the effects of LSD and the contradiction with the 50s uh, social context. Then we'll talk about the uh, MKUltra, the CIA mind control program. And then the counterculture from 1966 till uh, 73, and then some festivals. So uh, in 1943, uh, you know that uh, Albert Hoffman uh, discovered LSD. Well, it was discovered way, way before, actually. And he find that the uh, spiritual cr crisis within the modern societies, and that uh, it needs a shift from the materialistic, and LSD could help it. That gave a political edge to LSD, actually. Um, so it's a really widespread tool, uh, especially in the 60s, we're going to see that. Uh, it's uh, microscopic, uh, and uh, uh, it really opens the death of my unconscious when, when I uh, took it and opened me to the glorious, indescribable beauty of life, really. Uh, so um, now we're gonna, I'm going to do that in uh, music, as uh, it's uh, one of my tracks uh, featuring Russell Brand. That explains a bit uh, the, the effects uh, of LSD. So it gives you a clearer view of the world. Uh, the positive emotions are intensified. The ego is weakened. And uh, you feel the absence of no conflict. We are part of everything and all of us is one. We are part of everything, and all of us is one. So you can see this music video at one in the cinema room. It's going to be an exclusive as it's released in uh, five months. <laughs> Uh, and listen to uh, Russell Brand as well. So uh, the other effects uh, that I had, it's a new interpretation of uh, relationships and objects, actually. Uh, and uh, some synesthesia that you can feel sounds and uh, uh, hear what you see, uh, all these kind of things. And I felt a deep connection with nature. Uh, and I felt responsibility for the environment. And I really could feel... A, uh, I could do something for this world if everybody was on the same wavelength as me. So it's uh, this feeling of freedom, really, and the, the feeling of a concrete utopia that is possible, which will be the values of the underground, actually, that we're going to talk about. And many other features we'll go through, and many other features that we cannot go through. <laughs> so uh, the post-society, uh, post-World World War II, it's, uh, there's a glorification of technique, uh, and which is considered as human progress. Uh, as you know, the Anthropocene, we are quite close from that. We are stuck in traditional values. Uh, the capitalism is king. There's an enormous growth, the glorious 30, as we call it in French, 30 years after the war. The, it's based on unlimited resources, and there's a massive industrial agriculture, a general censorship of inf alternative information, but even the normal information is completely controlled by the state. Of this poster explaining it. It's the end of the colonization wars, the Cold War. Uh, there is a big generation going on as well, hopefully, uh, <laughs> which is a hope, actually. With the, they're saying that it's free to move, to act, to have sex. To, it's a rejection of materialism. And uh, they're really on a spiritual quest, which is going to be the catalyst of the next generation, the acid generation coming but also the situationists that uh, were saying that the capitalism successes, uh, such as technological development or uh, leisure, could not outweigh the social dysfunction and the degradation of everyday life that it simultaneously implied. Uh, Guy Debord, as you know. Uh, now we're going to talk about the CIA mind control program. Uh, it's a massive operation. It's, uh, there's 150 projects uh, in the army, society, torture. Uh, so, and uh, 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 the, Senate, sele, uh, excuse me, the Senate Select Committee report said LSD is used 
to control the activities and mental capacities of individuals, whether willingly or not. Whether willing or not. So uh, that we, we are not talking about conspiracy here. It's the Senate saying, saying it. <laughs> and it's going to be contradictory uh, in my talk. You're going to feel that because the FBI has its own program called COINTELPRO, Counterintelligence Program, uh, against activism and personalities that are famous and uh, against the war. And also, there is, it's an, in opposition with the police that doesn't know what the FBI is doing, neither the CIA. Uh, and they are also extremely violent against the people that have long hair, for example, as simple as that. So you have to know that the CIA is pro-war, pro-drugs, and extremely racist. Uh, it's not a scientific organization. There was a test uh, in the 60s in 86 institutions, prisons, uh, hospitals, and so on. Uh, the most famous testers, we can call them, uh, or guinea pigs or whatever, it's uh, Ken Kesey. Uh, we're going to make a th th one flu of a cocoon nest after. And uh, Timothy Leary. We're going to test on uh, 3,000 students. Uh, and uh, there will be even tests on children. It's really a shady program. Uh, and they were really taking, taking advantage of our researchers that didn't know they were working uh, for the CIA because it was a covert funding so source, which was called the Human Ecology Fund uh, for some reason, so to make it even more <laughs> absurd. And uh, one of the most important things is that there was a think tank called a REN Corporation in 1962 was saying that uh, LSD could lead those in left-wing organizations to resign or become inactive. And the CIA going to take this extremely seriously and put billions into that, thinking that people could drop out of society and uh, that you are more suggestible in a way, so you are not going to civil rights mobilizations. And in fact, there were half right, we're going to see. So one of the section of the MK Ultra was the psychedelic rangers. They were here to do uh, LSD propaganda, uh, manipulating passionate, genuine individuals and uh, with PR firms, AstroTurf, and so on. Uh, there's one of the agents, Michael Bowen, who helped 100 acid test type events uh, in newspapers as well, financially. Of course, it's, we are talking about secret agents, so it's covert funds. funds. And there was a famous Johnny Appleseed of LSD, uh, the Captain Alan Hubbard, who was in the FDA and the Narcotics Bureau. And he would give LSD to all Hollywood, including Cary Grant and Nicholson, etc. And uh, some agents were also sent in Europe to give LSD to leftists. Uh, so they were very often dosing people, which means poisoning people. Uh, the undercover agents, uh, for them, it was a weapon to discredit left activists and personalities uh, in public. Uh, uh, one of them will be Abby Hoffman, a, a famous activist uh, who will do the EP movement. And uh, there was uh, uh, one uh, secret agent called Michael Linkshed. He was on a crusade to launch LSD in the world, and he had a mayonnaise jar he was giving everyone. And he would give, uh, like Timothy Leary, who's been dosed, by the way, uh, six times the normal dose. But they would increase the dose to 10 times the normal dose, 2,500 micrograms, to have a permanent transformation of the psychological disposition. Can you imagine uh, how high you are on that, especially just before a talk? <laughs> so the spies were everywhere, infiltrating all activism, the, even the bodyguard of Jerry Rubin, who's here, uh, which is one of the most famous activists, uh, American activists, uh, his bodyguard was George DeMille, an informant, who has his own group called the Crazies. And uh, through the Crazies, he would be very close to activist group, dose them, get them arrested, and then testify against them. It's a really nasty man. <laughs> so, uh, and there's a famous Chicago 7 trial who illustrate that. Uh, in 1973, all the archive is destroyed, but 
all the uh, accountancy was still on, and we have the line of the accountancy everywhere, and the Lee and Schlein in this amazing book called Acid Dreams, they uh, reconstructed what happened. And uh, it's extremely sourced and documented. I really recommend also the book of Joan Potash, Drugs as a Weapon Against Us. That is uh, another uh, must read and extremely sourced. I would say a quarter of the book is sourced. And uh, Bill Clinton in the 90s uh, make apologies. And uh, nowadays, maybe a new media, a Ultra. <laughs> so we're going to talk about a couple of personalities there. Uh, Timothy Leary, who is a manipulated figurehead. Uh, he was uh, in Harvard. Uh, uh, he had a kind of a messiah complex. He would uh, order through Harvard three million doses of psychedelics. And uh, of course, he would be fired at Harvard. And he implored through the turning to non dropout to abandon society instead of joining civil war mobilizations in a way. Uh, he would uh, be welcomed just straight after that at the Millbrook Mansion, uh, which belongs to uh, William Mellon Hitchcock here, um, which is. Uh, uh, the, the Millbrook Mansion was enormous. There were 64 rooms, 4,000 acres, uh, and they, he had for a virtually symbolic amount of money, which makes me think it was a kind of a, a guinea pig farm for LSD, really. And uh, it's, uh, William Mellon Hitchcock is a very interesting character. He was uh, from one of the richest families in the USA. Uh, the, uh, they, were, they made a Gulf Oil or Chevron, if you know. And they were extremely linked to the Castle Bank and very associated with the CIA and Richard Elms, their director. Uh, and I think we can thank William Melanichkov because he single-handedly directed the entire acid manufacturing uh, operations in the USA. And he was a banker for the two biggest acid uh, producers in the USA, Bear and the Brotherhood. And uh, we are talking here about hundreds of millions of doses. Huh? And he, there was a trial in 1973, and he would get a suspended sentence. On the other hand, you had the Brotherhood of Eternal Love that he helped, uh, who were uh, drug producers and distributors in the late 60s, hippie, like a hippie mafia. Their turnover of money back then would be like $200 million. Uh, they had the church of devotion of the LSD transformative power. And they were in a commune to thrive in self-sufficiency. And uh, one day, the top acid trafficker in the world, Ron Stark, came with a kilo of LSD, uh, and introduced by William Mellon Hitchcock. And, uh, and then he would be taken with 100 million doses in the 70s in Italy. And uh, he will get only one year in jail. And he will, to get, to get this sentence, he had to acknowledge he was working for the CIA in 12 countries. And uh, another example is the famous Osle Stanley Bear, uh, the largest chemist uh, in the USA till 1967, who would be also arrested with a 10 million street value, market value, and get only two years in prison. So there's a kind of many evidence that there were uh, CIA undercover operations in a way. It's the facts versus proofs. Uh, do your research if you want. Now we're going to hear a bit of uh, Aldous Huxley and um, uh, about the truth serum he was working on so uh, enemy uh, agents could reveal their secrets. Also, Timothy Leary is at uh, a meeting of secret agents and uh, saying that the pranksters were maybe part of them. So I let you uh, hear that. Uh, that we are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which uh, will enable the controlling oligarchy who have always existed and presumably always will exist uh, to get people actually to love their servitude. Uh, this is the, seems to me the, the ultimate uh, in malevolent revolution, shall we say. I give the CIA a total credit for sponsoring and initiating the entire consciousness movement, counterculture events of the 1960s. The CIA funded and supported and uh, encouraged hundreds of young psychiatrists to experiment with this drug. 
The fallout from that was that the young psychologists began taking it themselves, discovering that it was an intelligence-enhancing, consciousness-raising experience. Cell, whatever you want to call it. That they kept a, <coughs> you kept a... Uh, well, you might not call it a cell, let's call it a cluster. <laughs> <laughs> Our undercover agents in Los Angeles were very cool about, uh, uh, and yet they did more in a very uh, laid-back way. Uh, and it's never been as public, public as uh, some of the other, uh, yeah. you, you know, the buses running around the country. Yeah. So the bus running out around the country is uh, Ken Casey and his Merry Pranksters. So uh, he, uh, as we were saying, one of love, uh, he made this bestseller, One Flew Over Cuckoo Nest. There's, uh, he buys the bus, go around the country. Uh, and um, so he would always say uh, to remodeling yourself to cover changing institutions. Uh, till the, the police will arrest the bus several times, but he will never go in. He will not go in jail. When he pulls the plug, he's arrested and go to jail. We're going to talk quickly about rock stars that were role models that influenced the population, and uh, the MI6 and the CIA were really taking that extremely seriously. Uh, uh, several. Um, uh, agent's job was to get musicians tripping, actually. Uh, and there was a lot of strange death of, uh, of uh, musicians that were a kind of activists, and they were on a 24-7 surveillance. Uh, for instance, we're cannot go, not going to go through all that because it would take a lecture for every of these artists, but Jimi Hendrix, manager, was a former MI6 agent and he would do a mafia kidnap, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Brian Jones uh, it's, well, was about to form a band with Lennon and Hendrix. Top military strategists really fear uh, black radical and uh, leftist joining forces, and nothing explained his drawing. Uh, even the eyewitness, uh, an agent knew his name, a spy knew his name, anyway. The uh, Beatles, but not talking about the Beatles, rather, well, the Beatles you can see in 64 and 66, that's something that happened. Uh, probably it's LSD. Uh, <laughs> so Dr. Riley uh, dosed them. Uh, as you know, there's a song called Dr. Robert, uh, uh, and then they made the magical mystery tour, who was uh, really in favor of LSD in a way. And uh, um, there's many radical political songs of John Lennon. He was harassed constantly by the FBI, and his murder was completely a program killer, trained by the police, actually. There's a lot of evidence about that. So I want to ask you now, do you have a right-wing friend who took LSD in the audience? Extreme right wing, yeah? yeah. Oh, that's one, okay. You find one as well. Okay, I found one, so <laughs> as well. <laughs> so uh, the left wing is more empathic, the right wing more egoistic in the general. To have a true opinion, you have to consider both sides. Uh, and the quote is, I'm, I'm still far right on the political spectrum after LSD. There's no black and white, just a gray scale. Uh, everything has an opposite. Uh, so there's a personality deterioration and a possible manipulation with a good deterioration, I, I think. Uh, so to cut all that, uh, to me there's a lot of things that are fat-based. For me, the CIA underestimated the effect of LSD from 62 till 66. Uh, the effect that more, op more spectrum of options are available when you take it. Uh, there's more curiosity to look for truth than activism is near. And uh, after that, in 67, it will be prohibited. It will go from fully available to extremely criminalized as a class A drug. The counterculture. Wow. It's going to be. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to go really quick. Uh, so uh, the underground, they were feeling that something was wrong within the society, and they were all conscious, well-being, uh, ecology, sexuality, the body. The hippies very often uh, considered as uh, uh, the white Negroes because of the long hair and suffering from the police. And actually, the word hippie is coming from the Senegalese, the Wolof. Uh, for the, the, the jazz men in the 30s were calling themselves hipsters, which means having a clear vision. So here's from the word hippie for you. Uh, the flower power, of course, uh, uh, was nonviolent, but protest and act with a flower child. And the best 
uh, summary of what is the underground at that time is John Sinclair of the F MC5, who will be arrested uh, and sentenced 10 years for two joints. So when you compare with the guys arrested for with 100 million acid doses, there's a big problem. We are people. We live the same way. We listen the same music. We smoke the same sacraments. We are united by our common v values and vision of the future. We want the same things, freedom, self-determination, peace, justice, harmony, and equality for all the people. We will not stop till we get this to all the people worldwide. I've got a bit goosebumps after that. <laughs> so there, were, there was a rejection of the manipulated consciousness and subliminal advertising, an overthrow of indoctrination in schools and medias, preordained limits of experimentation and creativity, commodities, meaningless work with no re realization, competitiveness, and a rejection, of course, of the establishment and its economic structures. Some of the protest topics, of course, peace, make love, not war, the consumption society, uh, ecology, uh, the sexual liberation, feminism, uh, psychotropes, uh, so social issues and equality, and the free press, which was a strong arm of, this, uh, of the underground with the typographics completely uh, blown. And it's really a piece of art. And free press in the sense that there is no censorship. It wasn't actually free to buy. Uh, the protest movements, uh, there was uh, the Provo in Amsterdam, which is uh, an anarchist, activist, nonviolent movement from 65 till 67. They were divided in four groups, the Hapners with absurd humor, the Beatniks, the thinkers, and the activists who had an influence on public opinion. And at the wedding of Queen Juliana, who was um, uh, marrying with a Nazi um, in uh, Holland, uh, they, uh, they made a fake news that she declared becoming an anarchist negotiating with Provo. Therefore, there was 25,000 troops guarding the parade route. <laughs> so, and also they would do other uh, fake news like uh, uh, they would dump LSD in the city water supply. And they were really, they've been actually elected at uh, the city council of Amsterdam. And they were proposing laws that are really revolutionary even now, uh, like air polluters be taxed or uh, a bike sharing system. Uh, the free clinics with contraceptives, uh, banning uh, speculation by squatting empty buildings or a car sharing project. Um, another movement is the diggers in, from 66 till 68. Uh, so it's a legendary radical uh, group of uh, bohemian street actors um, who had freedom and consciousness for the community. They would do guerrilla theater and were really authentic and anti-media attention. Uh, the context is an enormous influx of uh, young people arriving in SF, San Francisco, that the government was ignoring. And they would coin the phrases such as, today is the first day of your life, or do your own thing. They wanted to create a mini society free of money. Wow. <laughs> uh, they would provide daily food. Uh, uh, you had to cross through the free frame of reference, so you took really consciousness that you were given free food. Medical care, transport, housing, uh, we do parties with uh, Chinese airplane, Jefferson airplane, the happenings, uh, that you, you see one here, uh, the death of money is called, um, give away stock from stores, works of political art, and they had their communication company. And I really recommend for me the ultimate book on counterculture, which is Ringo Levio by Emmett Grogan. Uh, the Students for a Democratic Society, it was, it was an enormous hope uh, for radical humanist change in the US. Uh, there was 100,000 members in the SDS in 68. In 1966, his president would say, US intelligence drugged the entire generation to disorient it, to sedate it, and depolitize it. In fact, in 1969, the SDS was over, dissolved, and uh, some people of the SDS become to uh, uh, do the Weather Underground, uh, which was a guerrilla group which did 180 major bombings uh, with no people getting hurt in New York police headquarters, corporate offices, and so on. Uh, Greenpeace, you, I will let you dig about Greenpeace, but uh, they, they would send a ship into a testing zone of a, 
uh, of uh, one megaton nuclear bomb. Uh, and May 68 to illustrate the um, students' spontaneous demonstration everywhere in the world, uh, occupation of universities uh, uh, against consumerism, uh, tra imperialism, traditional values. It's the largest strike ever, 11 million people, one quarter of the population for two weeks, put the entire economy into a halt. And actually, political leaders feared civil war, so they increased the minimum wage by 25%. This, it spurred an artistic movement um, with slogans, songs, graffiti. Uh, they would say, uh, be realistic, ask the impossible, or it's forbidden to forbid. Uh, the, the movement would end uh, really in one go uh, with uh, the goal of proposing an election and the threat of state of emergency. Uh, the media were saying the army is at the door of Paris, and that was finished. Also, we have to talk about the communes. Uh, it's an intentional community of people living, working together, sharing common interests, uh, values, belief, finance, uh, property, of course, decision making with the consensus, reduced hierarchy, and uh, low um, footprint. And it will, uh, it's also be linked to the uh, rainbow gatherings uh, all over the world that you can still go, and now the eco villages. And the Burning Man values have been applied from, uh, inspired from them. They would live in self-sufficiently through very often the Wall of Catalog, that is a handbook for a holistic model of society, full of tips, listed products, methods for building, uh, organic farming, and so on. Nothing is for sale, just facilitating contact access. So it was a forerunner to the internet, and it extremely inspired Google. Uh, some festivals, the Trips Festival um, is the beginning of the uh, hippie counterculture, 19, uh, January 1966. It brought together the entire avant-garde of the Bay Area, uh, over 10,000 people. It was an immersive, participatory, multimedia event. Uh, the same kind of event will happen one year after in London with a 14-hour technical dream, uh, which will attract 7,000 painters. And um, it was a fundraising concert for the magazine International Times, which has been busted. And uh, uh, Pink Floyd would headline the concert. Finally, Woodstock, uh, there was uh, half a million people instead of uh, 50,000 uh, without a fist fight. It was a sense of total uh, social harmony, a pivotal movement in popular music history, and the definitive nexus of the counterculture, I guess. All the art you've seen is taken from the Psychedelic Art Center collection, uh, which is a, a the first of its kind uh, art center with a transversal aesthetic showing uh, 6,000 pieces of a permanent collection with interactive installation, a concert hall, workshop, theater, screenings, conference, uh, a bar, a gallery, a shop, a library of counterculture, an artist residency, a loft of interactive installation. This is uh, scenography, so you can come and join the project. And uh, like Isaac Abrams, of, uh, which is the forefather of psychedelic art uh, and the forefather of our magazine we are beginning, uh, called Free Bliss. So uh, I would advise you to, like him, to get your glasses <laughs> that are here. <laughs> and they are available up there uh, on the third floor, or if you meet me somewhere. Uh, and feel free to send your contributions or to give them to me. You can go to psychedelic.com. The PowerPoint has gone mad with my typographies. We have also a psychedelic wave radio show on the Melotron. There is my contact here, Instagram and so on. Uh, and there's a lot of art uh, up there as well in the third floor. Feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.